Okay, I have um, this development board here that I got. I got this on eBay. And it's based on the C8051F340, which um, it still can, it's, a, it's based on the 8051. It can, um, th this can still run the basic instruction sets. It's got a superset now that, um, that it runs, plus it's got debug features and it's a, the pipeline's faster. It's got a pipeline actually, instead of, um, waiting to, to execute each, um, instruction one at a time. Um, I bought it on eBay for like $9.00. $9.99 free shipping from China and it took like two months to get and it's got um, a card reader it's got the um, a USB port and it's got a um, COM port and then it's got all the headers for all the the ports along the side here and then it's got it also it's got the the um, connector for the JTAG that's how you um, read and write the data to the and do the, the the debugs and stuff like that you just have to get a j a jtag debugger like this and i bought this this was like nine dollars on uh ebay and i thought it was silicon labs you know for about two or three weeks you know i just glanced at it and finally read actually read what it says and it says silicon with an m instead of an n so it isn't silicon labs it does work you know, it works. The, the the software detects it and it, it flashes the the card. And um, they have I also have this too, which is this is an actual this is an actual silicon um, laboratory uh, board development board. It's a um, C850. What is it? C850. Let me see what that is. C eighty fifty one F three twenty. I guess the other one's a fifty one too. And um, this has like um, a temperature sensor, onboard temperature sensor, and um, it's got a potentiometer. And it's got a reset and then two push buttons, two keyboard push buttons, and um, it's got the JTAG, and it's got the COM port. It's got the power, the barrel power connector, and uh, it's got the USB, and the, then the, the um, ports right there, and then it's got a breadboard where you can solder stuff to it. And um, so this one, you know, if you want to use the the U the power from the the USB, the JTAG, you can. It's, there's jumpers to set on this, or if you don't, you want to use the you know the this on the 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 nine volt power on the side that's fine too and the same with the the other board the other boards um yeah the the same this this one um you can do the same but the jumper is it's not there's no jumpers on the board if you notice there's no and there's also an external um external crystal which this one doesn't this one's using a built-in crystal in the um, in the um, in the processor, and this one's using external external crystal. And um, so anyway, the the I took the like I I love I really like taking stuff apart to see what's inside, and I took this apart. And um, there's jumpers in there, and one of them will will just disallow the voltage to go out to the board so you have to use the nine volt um power um connector and also there's a, a couple two other jumpers i couldn't figure out what they did but i didn't really care i didn't really want to fool with it because i didn't think it was anything that i would need need right away and um so that's basically that's basically the um so that's basically the other board and I'll put the other the other one over there too. And then I'll show you what I use for. Um... So what you're going to need 
uh, to use with the um, the development boards is you're going to need to use uh, Silicon Labs uh, IDE, which is called Simplicity Studio. And I think they have version 3, 4, and 5 available. And I have 4 on my laptop, and I'm using 5 on my desktop. And I don't see why anybody would want to use anything but 5, you know. So um, that's what I have. And it takes a while for the, the app to boot. And it has an IDE. It has um, something called a configure configurator. Because what this has is the chip is basically an 8050 legacy 8051 where you can you still can run the old assembler programs and C and and even um, I would suppose maybe even um, um, assembly language and um, what it has is it has an, an, a, um, a super set super instruction set that um, there's something called a crossbar what the crossbar allows you to do is it allows you to, um, you can put any signal on any pin or have any pin receive any signal. And you can make it a, um, an analog or digital pin. It's really nice. And um, so one of, the, one of the features of using that is you have to use the, um, the Simplicity Studio. And let's see, I've already... Um, I already know there's no updates. So basically this is the launcher and this is the um, Simplicity ID. This is the debugger and this is a configurator. And so what the configurator does, if you use this, what it does is it has a template and it only works when you use the configurator template. And what it'll do is it'll bring up your um, whatever, whatever the packages that your processor is you'll bring that up in all the pins and you can actually um, go in and configure the pins by clicking on them which i guess maybe is a little bit easier uh, the alternative is you have to do it through um the registers and you you know by um a one or a zero you enable the the port to or the pin to do um to do uh whatever you want it to do so um, I'm going to go back to the launcher. That's going to take a moment to uh, to launch. There it goes. So um, let me plug in the. You want to make sure you have your your uh, whatever it is you have your device plugged in. It's showing a ghost of what it, what the last one was. So now you have your your um, the board, and this is the um, the JTAG. And so we're going to click start. And you now have this create a new project. Or example projects. Example projects are good because um, what they do is they show um, the, um, the example projects are good because they show um, they're a verified, vetted program, and they'll definitely run on the board. And you can actually go in and you can you can glean a lot of information on how there, you, there's instruction manuals, but a lot of this stuff is really advanced. And, and um, I know C a little bit, and they use some really advanced C, um, you know, programming. So I'm still figuring a lot of it out. And it helps when, if you have a program that, that does run, you can go in and, you know, you can take parts of it. You can make like a... You know, use part from one program, part from another. And then once you figure everything out, you can write. Still pretty soon, you'll be writing your own programs. So 
So th these are all the sample programs. There's an MTC project. And um, you can, like I said, you can you can use create the MTC project and create one of these other projects. And you can take stuff from it and put it in your C project. And, um, you know, you can use, like I said, you can use code. I, what I was doing is I was trying to get... Um, I'll go a little bit into it more detail later, but I was using a, um, you know, a really simple rudimentary program that's made for an 8051, you know, that um, it just went through a loop that would count down a while. I think it was a while loop. It would just count down and decrement it every time it went through. And then when it finished, it would do a test and it was zero and it would go back to the program. That's what I was using for timing to waste, waste some time. You know, I was blinking a LED on a port. So you can, I mean, you can use old programs in there and they'll, they'll still run. That's the great part about it. Um, but you should try to use the, the advanced, um, the advanced uh, features. So what we're going to do is we're going to run Blinky. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run Blinky, and uh, what Blinky will do is uh, it'll light up D2. So click Create. It looks good. Click Finish. Click on the debugger. When it does that, you got to click on run and then click on resume. There it goes. And you can look through the program and see how it runs. You know, another thing too is is um, you can take a program that it, one of the the um, sample programs you can add stuff to it to test it. You know that the program runs and you can so you can add add, add different um, you know different um, procedures to it or functions and see if it you know see if your function works. So one of the issues that I was having was that um, the um, the sample programs ran great. You know, I could, uh, like Blinky, I could send it out to the board and it would blink and everything. And I tried to create my own programs. I tried to use, you know, Blinky, they're using an oscillator. You know, it's a couple um, levels more, you know, high tech than using like a while loop or something where it goes through and decrements from 100 or something every time it goes through and then it tests for it to be zero and when it's zero goes back you know you use that to waste some time to be, you know make the for the led on or led off so i was using something like that that i knew that i knew it worked on you know regular standard 80 80 50s or even like uh 80 c 50 ones or something like that you know the avrs and um and it wouldn't work. And what I found out was it was um, it's this. And this is the watchdog timer. And you have to have the watch. You have to what the watchdog timer is, is for um, what I was told is that it, if the software gets in a loop or it just goes, just keeps running, it will turn the turn the system off. And if you don't configure it, it won't even make it to the the. Um, the main your main body of the program so the 40 is it's an 8-bit um it's an 8-bit register so 40 the four the leading four 
is uh, 0100, and that 1 is a 6-bit, six, six which that turns on the watchdog timer, and the 00, zeros, you know, it's just, it's all zeros. So you have to make sure you um, put that in your, that's got to be in every program, or, or like I said, it won't, it won't function. 